All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an Amp Guard Legal Sword. Uh, this is during the Rules of Play 7.7. Um, follow the link in the video or in the description where I, wherever I can put it uh, to the Amp Guard Inc. website and go into their documents and look at their Rules of Play. Um, for everything on construction, how to play the game, you're going to want to read over that anyways just so you know how to play. Basic materials of what you're going to be needing is your core. This is what your foam is going to be going on um, to make your blade. Well, the rules on this is nothing um, solid. It has to be hollow except for bamboo. Um, nothing wood except for bamboo. And nothing metal. Um, you can use uh, PVC pipes. Amcard is a game of speed tag. Those are heavy but you can use a PVC pipe. Uh, if you're going to a half inch, just it, it's enough to fill in that. Or you can get the smaller one, and you have a bigger chance of breaking. PVC pipe neat, but you can use it. Um, fiberglass, kite spar, I don't know what that is, but you can use it. Ask the people in the park, uh, they may know. Um, carbon fiber, uh, golf clubs, you can use those, Cuts off, cut off the heads. Um, you can get those retail stores, uh, sports, sporting goods stores, you know, whatever. As long as it's not the metal one, you're going to stick to the no metal rule. You're yeah, also going to be needing uh, some blue camping pad. Uh, this is primarily what you're going to be using as your caps on the swords. Um, you can also use this. I've never done this, so I'm not going to make a video on it. Uh, you can also use this to do a spiral wrap on your core to make your blade, uh, because the camping pad will give you a longer life of, on, on the foam of your sword, because it's just a better quality noodle or foam. Um, so ask around your park if you want to try and do this. Uh, see if you can get somebody to show you how to do it properly. Uh, but the cheapest, the cheapest, cheapest and easiest thing to get is your pool noodles. Uh, you can get these retail stores during uh, summer pool season. Um, if it's out of season, uh, you can get them in pool supply stores, uh, hot tub, pool supplies, whatever. Um, if there aren't any around you, talk to your uh, people in your local park. Or try and do the spiral wrap on your camping cap and they can help you out, or they just might have some spares they can sell you for a little bit. And you're also going to be needing some, uh, everybody calls these foams. Uh, these are just basic craft foam sheets. Uh, but you want to get the ones that are peel and stick. You know, it's, the other side is just stick, uh, sticky side, makes it a lot easier to put on to your sword. Uh, tape. Tape is absolutely necessary. Uh, packing tape is what you're going to be doing to cover the blade on your sword, give it a longer lifespan. Uh, the better quality tape you use, uh, the better of a stick it has to it, and the better of a torque wrap you can put on. Uh, the cheaper the cheaper the tape, the you can't pull so tight on it because it's going to snap and break. Um, I don't know why I put it down. Typically for the handles and uh, pommel, you can, you can cover the pommel with cloth. Um, people use electrical tape. Uh, I, I, I like to using fabric tape for my handles, um, or otherwise known as hockey tape or athletic tape. Again, retail stores, uh, pharmacies, sporting goods stores. It's just tape with a fabric side to it. It gives you better grip. You don't have to worry about sweaty hands or slipping. Um, but you can use you can use electrical tape. I recommend you know like doing different colors. You can stick with black, but every everybody does black. So when this goes in a bag, you don't know it's yours if it's not in your bag. So different colors of tape for your pommels and your handles. You can use that. Um, and finally, you're going to be needing something to use as your cover. Now the rules say it has to be opaque. You can't see through it when it is on your phone. Um, it really depends on how picky the person is in your park that is checking your swords. Um, 
the places I've played, they don't care. Uh, but just in case, always keep uh, more more tights with you. You know, the person says, I, I can't use it unless I can't see through it, so that way you can just slide more on, and there you go. Um, I got a little container of it, a uh, pack, pack of two tights at Walmart for 33 cents. Uh, you can also make your own covers for these, which I really recommend. Like if it's lying out in the middle of the field and you're not by it, you'll be like, okay, that's mine. He picked it up. Okay, I know he has it. Because you can you can use you know the the unique covered um, unique design fabrics to make your own. Just sew it up into a tube, cut out a little a little circular patch of it, sew that onto the end of it, and you can just slide that down. And you know, uh, I really recommend keeping a utility knife with you because if you go off to an event, um, you're not going to have like a steak knife in your bag and you can poke through or something like that. But you can use the steak knives to cut your foam. I just like using the utility knife because it's always a sharp blade. Uh, you know, roller, hacksaw, or pipe cutter, whatever you use to cut your core so you can get that nice flat end. The be the better end on um, your core you have less likelihood it's going to go through your foam. Scissors, marker, measuring tape, rulers. That's it for your materials. To get started I'm going to be using a uh, thinner bamboo stick. Uh, you, you can use uh, the larger ones as long as, as long as it's not bigger than the hole or you know, it, it's a lightweight you use for your wrapping foam. Uh, but I'm going to be using the small ones so that I can show you how to uh, not make it a, a rattler and how to counterweight it if you want to. Just like regular um, actual swords are made, they're counterweighted so that they're right there in the middle so it's evenly balanced and you're not top heavy. So to do so. To make your core so that it, it's not going to rattle around um, on the inside of your noodle because as you're hitting it's going to bounce around and break down the noodle from the inside. What you're going to be doing is get this kind of out of the way. What you're going to be doing is I usually cut out um, a piece of the foam sheets about the width of a ruler. And what is going to be your stabbing end, not your handle. Just take it and wrap it around the end of it. Just enough to where it's going to be filling in the hole. You want this to be nice and flush. And just to keep checking it to make sure that you're not going over. There we go. So you're not going over, cut out a little slice of your noodles so you don't have to slide the whole blade onto it. Wrap it around. And take a little piece of cake. And we are just going to tape over that because uh, the foam on, as long as your core is good, these foamies um, will last you a very long time. Uh, so as you're replacing your noodles, uh, you can wind up rolling up the foamies on the inside. So just taper over them so that you don't have that problem. Okay, so we've gotten your stabbing tip taken care of. Alright, now you're going to be needing to figure out how much room you're going to be needing for your hand. Um, short swords, you need, you always, on your swords, you need two-thirds of the core covered up in your foam. So with being a short sword, just space enough for your hand is good enough. Uh, what I like doing is leaving about two inches of uh, the pool noodle on on the end of my core, and then another inch as a space, or you know, pretty much uh, knuckle width, so that you know you you've got an extra hanging out there. So you, you've, you've got the two inches on the end so that you can easily attach your 
pommel to your, your core. Now, uh, on your one-handers, you get a lot more control um, if you have room for your thumb, you know, however you like to play. Like, you can hammerhead it, but you get, you get more control using your thumb. So you want to figure out how much space you're going to be needing for your free handle. Let's see, we're going to go to about here. All right. And what I like doing is just so I don't have to keep redoing my, my handle every time I replace my blade, I usually leave about an inch between my handle and where my noodle is going to stop. So you've gotten that figured out. Again, mark it if you want. And you need to figure out how much noodle you are going to use. So just like your pommel, you're going to be leaving about an inch on the end of it. You know, you can measure, measure this out or, you know, you can just eyeball it. Uh, typically it's better if you measure it out so you can get a little easier cut on it and just cut this straight down and you got that all cut and you can take this off you can leave it just on there doesn't really matter I've never seen it ruin, ruin the e, the outer skin on the, on the noodle so you've gotten that cut double check it to make sure you're where you want to be now so you've gotten this done and I'm skipping ahead I missed it. so you know how long your blade's going to be you're going to be tightly wrap taping it down here on the end so you want to put another, another rattle stopper about in in the middle of where your blade's going to be see I got my little piece of noodle on there you just wrap it and we're good and for this one Just enough so it's covered with tape so you don't roll up when you're putting your blades on and off. Okay. Now you've gotten now you've gotten your noodle uh, cut to the length you want. You're going to want to bevel the end of it so it's easier to put on. Just kind of go around the hole. You can do it that way, or the way I, let, I typically did it was going about two inches up and slicing it down, slicing it down to the circle. Do that both sides uh, square and then cut off your corners. As, as long as it's tapered off, it's a lot easier to attach to your core. Okay. So we've gotten that taken care of. Now, I typically just uh, cut this down after I put it on because you can rip it a little bit when you're doing it. Again, take it, take it down to where you were stopping it, having that inch of a space on the end. Okay, now this is what is called the torque wrap. You're going to be using that term. I heard a lot. Just take your packing tape and start wrapping it around the bottom of your noodle. And once you get down to where you beveled the edge, you want to st start pulling on the tape so you're compacting it. Make sure you're not going past this little line or 
keep checking your space down here so you're not pulling the noodle farther onto the cork. And you just tightly pull it on your noodle. And tape it down to your core on that inch space. Alright. So we've gotten this tape down. Now you're going to be wanting to stuff the hole. To do that, because you have a whole bunch of camping pad that you're not going to be using, and it's good quality foam, cut out two little squares. And the reason why you leave an inch is because the pad is about a half inch each, so you're going to have, you're going to need that inch hole in the end of it. And just put those two squares in there. And make sure that you're nice and flush. Okay. Now with your foam sheets, just so you can have a, um, a, a longer lifespan out of your cap. Some guy taught me this. this is a nice, neat little trick. Take your your crafting foam, or your foam sheets, your foamies, and cut out a little circle using your little thing. And you take that, take off the sticky back. And put that over your end. Again, check to make sure you're still nice and flush and you're not pushing your noodle farther down onto your core. Now, again, cut out a little circle for your camping pad. And you don't have to pull this tightly. You just want to tape it down. so that it stays on the end of your shirt. Cap is all taken care of. You're attached to your core. Now to preserve, preserve your sword, take your packing tape, and you're going to want to cover up your whole noodle, all right? Now doing this, you want to try and keep your tape as smooth as possible because what happens when you hit somebody is the air that's on the inside of the noodle uh, tries to, is, tries you know, obviously goes somewhere. And the less wrinkles you have in it, the less room that the air has to move around. Now you can do this up and over and go on onto the other side. on the end, tuck in your corners so you don't have little spots poking out. You can do that up and over as long as your whole noodle is covered in tape. Now if you did what I just did, and you stopped it, well either way, you're going to want to be overlapping your tape roughly about a quarter inch each. All right, so now that you've gotten the entirety of your noodle taped down, and there isn't any any little gaps going on, and the whole thing is covered in your tape, we're gonna start working on the pump. First thing you're gonna wanna do is start to count away. See, because that is way too high, roughly down. You want it to be roughly down around here if you want a camera weight. To do that, we're just going to be using our duct tape. <clears throat> and you're going to take it and just wrap it around the end. And 
again, you want to try and do this nice and flush if you're going to be using the tape as a counterweight. You don't have to do this. It's all really just personal preference. Um, if you're not using the tape uh, for your counterweight, just like you did on your stabbing tip, uh, use your foamy to wrap around the end so it can fill in, fill in your hole. All right, now uh, do one roll of duct tape around the end of it. You know, check to see how you're doing because you know that's it's brought it lower. I was up here earlier, now I'm down here. If you want it to be lighter, you can put on another roll, um, the bottom of this one. Uh, but keep in mind you're going to be putting on just a little bit more weight uh, when you're putting on your handle. All right, now I've, I've added my counterweight, and I'm pretty close to where I want to be. Now we're going to be putting on our pumps. Now I'm going to be doing this just a little bit opposite of how I did this. I'm going to be tapering it while it's on. So you, you buy your two, two inches on the core for your pummel. So you have that inch space for your two little squares of camping pad. Make sure you're nice and flush. bevel down your pummel. Okay. So you've got the pum the, your, your pummel all beveled down. Again. One little sheet of your foam gives you a little bit longer lifespan for your cap. Lifespans on your cap really don't matter unless you're one of those people who pummel everybody. Like pop them right in the gut. And you got your cap all put on, you, you've got your plenty of space, make sure you, you're not got, got any core feeling. And just like you did on the end of your sword, you're going to torque wrap your pommel. that all torque wrapped. Now, if you're using like a PVC pipe or one of these larger bamboo sticks or a golf club, the the end of the golf club is going to be a little bit bigger than your pool than your noodle. Uh, so you can you can either cut off that little part so you can slide it on. So you can get your noodle on, you can cut off the end of the rubber grip or you can just cut off the rubber grip entirely. Um, when you have a larger pipe and it's got that hole in it, you can just roll up a little bit of the duct tape just enough to where it's going to fit nice and snug inside that hole. And that's how you're going to do your counterweight for your larger pipes. Now just so you can, you can leave your handle the way it is. Of course if you have this little end going on, a little bit more tape. For your counterweight, it's gonna be a little can be a little bit uncomfortable. To make a more comfortable handle, you can use your foam sheets and just wrap it around the end where you're comfortable with the size of the handle.
Now, if you have a little bit of a gap or uncomfortable feeling down here between your handle and your tape, you can take a little bit more of the foam sheet and just kind of bump it right up against it. Now you're going to be putting on your grip. Plain and simple, you just wrap it around your handle. Now you, you, what I what I recommend um, for like when your bag your your sword accidentally goes in somebody else's bag is like using different colors for your grips and on your pommels so that you can easily identify it because you can't see the covers on them. Uh, it's a lot easier to identify your sword in a bag if you do something unique with the pommel. Wrap that onto up my core. That's good to go. Now we're going to start working on covering up the pulse. Now you can make your own little uh, fabric cover for this, or you can use another pair of tights to cover it up. Um, but to save a little bit more time, you could use your tape. And to do that, just start going. On one side, so you can get the entirety of the bottom of your pommel covered. Okay, well, we've got that all taken care of. And typically, the way I marked mine so that I can see that it was my sword, if it wound up in somebody's bag. is I just put a different color on it so that it's not a black pommel like everybody else's. Right. That's all covered, taken care of. And now, let's see if I can do this over here. Let's cover the rest of it and start up at the end where your camping pad's at. And again, wrap it around. That looks like crap. I don't like it. <laughs> to cover that, you know, just put another foam sheet on it, like you, you know, bump it, make it nice and smooth. But it's still pretty comfortable. Fair enough. Finally, you're putting on your cover. Simple and easy. Light it on. And just so it's a little nicer on the end. Just like fold it over. And then take your tape. And very tightly, you want to tape your cover down so that it doesn't wind up coming off. You want to stop it at your where the, your foamy ends or you can take it on to the end. Alright, now your sword is all made and you've been playing for a while and this is how you properly check the foam on your sword so you don't wind up breaking it down. Because uh, what, what I've seen some people do is they will just take their foam and press down on the middle to see if they can get your core. Uh, that actually puts a lot more pressure on uh, the very end and can start breaking it down. You just want to three finger it, turn and press to see if you can find a weak spot. Now for the rest of it, you just want to turn and squeeze. That way you can check every single part of the foam and you can find that weak spot. When you find it, you want to squeeze just a little bit more. If you can feel core, it needs to be replaced. Now, if just your cap goes out, what you can do is you can just slice the tape off and put on another one. Uh, you want to check your little foam pads that are on the inside. If those have gone bad as well, 
you want to replace those and just tape tape it over. You don't have to re tape the whole thing if the whole because that'll add just a little bit more weight to it. And you're done!